Uh, Chair recognizes Mrs. Luna. I actually wanted to see if Mr. Epstein wanted to use some of my time to address some of the lies that Ms. Stanbury told about you. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's great. So, um, so the... So there, there is an argument that I, and I don't have the exact transcript, but the basic idea is that I'm bought Mr. in. Mr. Chairman, I would like to raise a point of order, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman. General lady will state a point of order. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to inquire about the chair's um, uh, read on the rules for this committee pursuant to what we adopted uh, in terms of uh, name calling and uh, can I can I directing? take back some of my time right now because I'm I'm interested no, no, in the you're, facts. I'm, you're, you're, we're gonna okay. Sure. I just yeah. want to hear the facts from you. No, okay, hold on one second. There's a point of order. Yep. And uh, Ms. Luna, your time is frozen. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask that the words be taken down by the gentlelady uh, from Florida regarding uh, her name calling of, uh, of me and uh, the assertion that somehow the factual exchange that I had bes between myself and the witness were somehow uh, other than a normal asking of questions to a witness. All right. Uh, just give me one second. Thank you. Thank you. So what I want to do is real quickly read our rules of witness decorum. And um, I would remind them that this is a violation of the rules of the House of Representatives to engage in personalities regarding the president or make statements that are personally offensive to him, that the rules govern members in debate and also applies to, um, to us as witnesses deliver their testimony. And so what I would ask is if... Um, Ms. Luna could perhaps rephrase to say maybe some untruths that were spoken. I think that would be fair and a part of decorum because we're going to disagree uh, all day long on certain topics as the two parties. And sometimes we, um, we do agree and then many times we don't. And so perhaps just rephrasing the question would satisfy everyone. And Ms. Luna, you're recognized for your full five minutes. Mr. Epstein, would you please correct um, some of the mistruths spoken about you? I would like to hear your perspective on what is factually accurate. Sure. So the, there are two things that uh, Representative Stansbury brought up. So one, one I, I think I addressed very clearly this idea of uh, any kind of racism. And she, she attributed this as almost an exact quote, me talking about the racial superiority of Western culture. And I, I clarified probably five times uh, that Western culture has nothing to do with race and it's about ideas, particularly individualism, freedom, and reason. So it didn't seem very, very honest to me to portray me as saying racial superiority. It seemed like another attempt to discredit me uh, and I think there's an inability to actually refute any of my arguments. And I think the same thing is true with the attack that I'm somehow representing and paid for by the fossil fuel industry. First of all, if I were, which I'm not, we need representatives of the fossil fuel industry here because they have expertise on this issue, which is about oil. So that's one thing, but it's just factually false. So I came to all of my ideas independently. And I said, I once I came to the conclusion that fossil fuels are good, of course, I proudly tried to advise fossil fuel companies, including coal companies, how to tell their story better. But to use my expertise and my convictions and to claim that I am dishonest and should not be listened to when I made a compelling case, I didn't think that was uh, appropriate. Uh, Mr. Epstein, I just wanted to ask you real quick, is China somehow protected by an invisible shield that prevents their carbon emissions from escaping? <laughs> no. Okay, so um, if we have the ability to produce clean energy here or at lower carbon emissions versus China, don't you think that that would be better for the climate? Um, 
Yes, but I, th I, think, I think the main thing is the world needs far more energy, and if you care about emissions, you need to find truly cost-competitive ways to do that, and the best way to do that is through freedom, through, through liberating nuclear, through liberating natural gas. And unfortunately, this administration is focused on limiting the freedom of certain industries, namely fossil fuels, including natural gas, and then imposing extremely expensive things that the market won't choose on its own, which is the whole IRA, which is just a, a total subsidy fest that does nothing to make uh, alternatives truly cost competitive. I, no, I, I agree with you. I think from a perspective of, on also national security to say that somehow the United States is going to go to completely electrical grid would actually pose a massive threat to us. Yes. Because if you have a hacker, they could shut down an entire first world country. And obviously that's something that we don't want. Um, my final question for you is, uh, first of all, thank you for coming to testify before my Congress. Pleasure. I appreciate you being here. Um, but with everything that we just heard, I mean, what is the best way that we as a country can really prevent China from essentially owning us? Because as you had stated earlier, the Paris Climate Accord. I mean, us even engaging in that is hindering us while they're polluting and destroying our planet. And I hear a lot about climate change, but of you know, few people of action that are willing to actually address that. Can I just comment on the grid, which you also mentioned? Yes, and, of course. Um, because you mentioned the security threat of the grid and it's vulnerable to these kinds of attacks. I think the number one thing that it's vulnerable to is we are catastrophically reducing the supply of reliable electricity and then catastrophically increasing the demand for reliable electricity. And so California, where I live, is a perfect example. We've, re we've attacked fossil fuels. We've attacked nuclear. So we have less reliable electricity. And then we're trying to mandate electric everything. And this is why, as I mentioned, uh, Newsom had this announcement, no more internal combustion engine vehicles. And then five days later, he had to say, don't charge your EV. And we have signs all over the place saying, don't use your electricity. We only have 3% penetration of EVs. So we're talking about this catastrophic, unthinking increase of EVs. And we are actually threatened, I have this documented, we're threatened to go to lose 20% of our reliable electricity in the next seven years under the Biden EPA. So that is a catastrophic threat. I can also answer about China, yes, please. if you'd like. So uh, I mean, the thing with China is China actually cares about energy and they are doing what is good for their people and, and also the power lust of the government in terms of energy. So they, for example, use five times as much industrial electricity as we do, overwhelmingly coal. And the only way for us to be secure and outcompete them is to have a very aggressive energy freedom policy. And that includes one is liberating domestic development from things like NEPO, which unfortunately this administration has done nothing to do and in fact reversed the good Trump administration things on NEPA. We need to end preferences for unreliable electricity and actually have all forms of electricity compete so we can actually have a stable grid. Uh, we need to reform the EPA so it stops shutting down reliable power plants. We need to what I call decriminalize nuclear, not just subsidize it and, and, and this kind of thing. And in general, we need an emissions policy of long-term reductions, not, cata not catastrophic emergency reductions, through liberating American innovation, not punishing America. And what the IRA does is it punishes America and accomplishes nothing globally, because as you said, Chinese emissions uh, influence the global emissions picture just as much as American emissions do. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Obviously, that was very factual, and I think you're very well qualified to be here. Thank you. Thanks.